So my name is Mark Senner, and I am the president of the West Vancouver Chamber of Commerce, and it's great to see you all here. We're happy to see so many of you coming out tonight, as we believe this is a very important election. We hope that this, this, uh, this event will provide an opportunity. Excuse me? Yeah. We hope this uh, event will provide an opportunity for our business community and West Vancouver voters to meet the candidates and have a chance to voice their issue and concerns and get their questions answered surrounding matters important to you and our business community. Tonight, we are partnering with the Ambleside Dundre Business, Asso business Improvement Association, Horseshoe Bay Business Association, Caulfield Business Association, and Park Royal, whereby we've selected a series of questions and have been, that have been brought forward to us by our members and residents to address important issues that are specific to the business community. And uh, that is the basis to the economy here, of course, in West Vancouver. We're delighted this evening to have Dr. Haycock, Dr. Ken Haycock, back to the chamber as our moderator again this year. Ken was an elected West Vancouver School Board member and chair for four years as well as district councillor. He also chaired the West Vancouver Arts Centre Trust and K Meek Centre Board and was a member of the West Van Memorial Board and of the West Vancouver Chamber of Commerce. Ken holds five graduate degrees, including his MBA, and has been honored by numerous national and international associations, as well as the Governor General, with the Queen's Jubilee Medal for contributions to Canadian society. He has just completed five years as research professor in the Marshall School of Business in the University of Southern California, where he continues with an honorary appointment. His research interests in many publications include the role of influence on political decision making and not-for-profit governance. Without further ado, I'd like to bring Dr. Haycock out to provide a little bit more context for the evening, how the agenda will spell out, and, and the rules with regards to how we're gonna proceed this evening. So Dr. Haycock, I'll leave it with you. Good evening. It's a delight to be back in West Vancouver, and especially in this amazing uh, building and facility, which really shows how different partner groups in West Vancouver can get together and do wonderful things for our community. They tell me that the decision of the moderator is final this evening, and yeah. I'm going to test it right <laughs> now, because there are dozens of people in the lobby waiting to register. And I'm going to suggest that they waive registration and let them in. Could we waive registration and let everyone in, please? I'm, I'm told that that is being done. Well, it's not being done. Maybe it is being done. This is the chamber's consultative period. We're sold out. Yeah. Well, first of all, I would just like to emphasize a couple of things this evening. The first is that, oh, by the way, I did meet most of you because I walked from Marine Drive up 15th here, so I did have an encounter with each of you on the, on the road on the way up, at least with your representation through signage. I'd just like to make it clear that this evening the focus is on business. There has been a number of all candidates meetings. This one is sponsored by the Chamber, so it should be of no surprise that the focus is going to be on business rather than other issues. The Chamber um, is a neutral party and in this process and does not endorse any one particular candidate or slate of candidates. The Chamber remains interested in promoting and advocating for the needs of its business members. To all speakers and candidates, we ask that you adhere to all time limits given and to follow the directions given by the moderator. I'd like to just editorialize on that just for a moment here. And that is that um, each candidate will speak for one minute to start and then one minute to close. And they'll have one minute for each question. We do have a timekeeper. A bell will go at one minute. I'd just like to emphasize that that bell is not your cue to wrap up. That bell is your cue to smile and say thank you and sit down. <laughs> and, and if you don't do that, I will smile and thank you and ask that you sit down. 
So I'm sure we won't have to do that at all. All speakers are asked to show proper conduct and be respectful of each other at all times, and we know that will happen, and the decisions of the moderator are final. Uh, there are questions from the chamber and uh, their partners, um, and these were solicited from their members and will be asked this evening. You know, in West Vancouver, there used to be a group called West Vancouver Citizens for Good Governance, Good Governance, and um, Good Government. And full disclosure, I think I was on their board for a few years. And that group used to have all the candidates trot out and see who might be endorsed and not endorsed. And for a long time, you really had to be endorsed by that group if you hoped to be elected. Uh, that group is no longer in business. And I'd just like to emphasize that you are the West Vancouver Citizens for Good Government. You came out tonight. You're showing the time. You're getting informed about this election, and it's your responsibility to pass what you learn onto your friends and neighbors as well. So this can be a very informed election in West Vancouver. We're going to start in terms of the format with opening statements. Uh, the candidates will each be given one minute for an opening statement. The question period will consist of a question being asked to three selected candidates then each candidate will be given one individually, one minute individually to respond. Now, I'd just like to point out that each candidate has been given, in the interest of fairness, two cards. Um, and maybe some got two cards and others didn't get any cards, not to show any favoritism. Um, we'll see that you get cards. They were given out to people who were here 29 minutes in advance, but not to any other. Um, we'll make sure that you get two cards. The, the purpose of the cards is that if a question is asked and the two candidates, three candidates respond to it, and another candidate wishes to answer that question, they can use one of those cards. Okay. And once you've used the card, put it under your um, chair, please, and I will be keeping track that you use only two of them. I'd like to point out that the cards will not be used for the undisclosed last question of the evening because then we know that you will all be trying to make a second closing statement without any regard to the question whatsoever. So we do ask that when you use one of the cards, it is to address the question because you carefully prepared an answer to it in advance and hope that it would be asked of you or someone made reference to a position that you disagree with or some other reason, but you only have two uh, chances at that. So I'd just like to be clear about that. In the closing statements, candidates will be given, again given, uh, one minute each for a closing statement. Uh, there will be no questions from the audience, uh, but you did have the opportunity, those of you who uh, arrived in time and saw the box at the door, to put questions into that box. And some of those questions will be drawn for the mayoralty candidates uh, later uh, this evening. Why are there no questions from the audience? Well, it should be obvious, but I will state it anyway. Some people forget that, in fact, they did not put in their nomination papers. They forget this. And they come to something like this and stand and make their opening statement before they get to the question. And we really don't have time for that. Uh, so we're taking the questions by car and we'll build that in later. But because this evening is for the business community, the business community uh, was solicited and their questions uh, will be used. So I hope that you can all live with that. I will announce each candidate's name in order and the clock will be set for one minute for each speaker. I'd like to point out as well that the chamber asked each candidate for council and for mayor to respond to specific questions that they were concerned about in terms of the uh, economic activity and business of West Vancouver. Um, these candidates responded. Craig Cameron, Jim Finkbeiner, Nora Gambioli, David Jones, Andy Krosick, Peter Lamber, Gabriel Lauren, Sharon Thompson, and Marcus Wong. And for mayor, these candidates responded, Mary Ann Booth, Christine Cassidy, Mark Sager, and Nolan Strong. And I would like to um, indicate that their responses to those questions are available in the lobby should you wish to pick up that package uh, when you leave. 
And although there will not be an opportunity for questions from the audience, I would like to make it clear that the candidates will be here at the end of their portion of this evening, and you should make a point of asking them your question specifically. Um, and I'd like to start really by acknowledging that it's no small feat to put your name forward to represent the residents of West Vancouver in this election, whether for school board, council, or mayor. And I'd like you to join me in just applauding these people who put their name forward. <laughs> I hope that perhaps you got all of the applause out of your system with that little activity. Uh, we, know that there, we know that there will be people who give answers that resonate with you or with whom you are knocking on doors or making calls. Um, that isn't the purpose. The purpose is to be informed, so please um, hold your applause or any reverse noises you wish to make if someone gives an answer that you don't prefer um, because people here obviously represent a point of view in every case that resonates with them and their neighbors and friends. The Chamber has asked me if I would start with the general survey questions for all candidates with no verbal responses and simply ask if you would raise your hand uh, to uh, these particular questions. So please raise your hand if you currently own a business in West Vancouver or work in West Vancouver. <laughs> Secondly, I'd like to engage in debate with each of you, but I'm not running. Uh, secondly, please raise your hand if you currently own a second home or an investment property in West Vancouver. Thirdly, Please raise your hand if you have read the recently adopted District of West Vancouver Economic Development Plan. I'm not sure what the purpose of all that was, but it was kind of interesting. For candidate questions then, I'll read the question before I give the name of the people to whom it's being addressed. Otherwise, everybody tunes out to what the question is. Yes. Okay, sorry. Yes. We're going to begin with each candidate making a statement um, before the questions are asked, obviously. And um, I would ask them to keep it to a minute, and we'll be going in alphabetical order by first name. Andy Crossley. So thanks very much, Ken. My name is Andy Krausick. And I want to thank the uh, Chamber and I want to thank the Business Development Association for putting this on. I look forward to the questions afterwards. Uh, because we only have one minute, I'm going to spend just a little bit of time at the beginning to, ta to tell you about why I'm running for council. I'm running because of my background. I'm running because at the age of 11 in 1964, I arrived here in West Vancouver, graduated from West Vancouver Secondary School. Uh, went on to a career in 37 years as a teacher, as a public school administrator. I became a member of a number of international boards. I served on a number of budget committees, including the Vancouver School District Budget uh, Management Committee for five years. Don't hold that against me. I uh, also have served quite a number of years on a number of boards here in West Vancouver. I co-chaired two advisory committees, two working groups, one on the Upper Lands and one on character housing. I was also on the inaugural community center board. I was on the youth task force. A short way of saying, I look forward to your questions coming up later. Thank you. Bill Soprovich. Well, thank you, ladies and gentlemen. I want to uh, tell you that I'm very proud that all of you uh, have uh, stood behind me for the last 22 years on council. Uh, I look at it from a point of view of some kind of trust. Uh, certainly in my dealings with uh, my homework and, uh, and people that I dealt with, it's now in the thousands. Uh, I must say that uh, I am the representative to the chamber and the BIA uh, as a council liaison, and uh, I did recuse myself from any chamber meetings that had to do with this uh, meeting tonight. There's lots of issues uh, about the local business area. I had a business in Park Royal and in Ambleside, and then I was an employee in Ambleside, and now I'm 
a sort of indirectly an employee of the district. So uh, I hope all the uh, questions that come towards me uh, can are not the difficult ones. I seem to recall actually on this auspicious day, I just interject here, having the opportunity to ask you a question last time about whether you favored cannabis shops in West Vancouver. So uh, you told me that was an unfair question, but today it would be all right. Carol Ann Reynolds. Count on Carol Ann. I came back from traveling all over the world in 1988, just before 1988, and got elected and was your first councillor for heritage. And I've dedicated myself to this municipality ever since. Uh, I've only missed about 15 council meetings since 1988. Uh, I've um, ad uh, advocated public input, and I can give you examples of that right now. So I can tell you I advocate things, and then I carry them through. So I'm someone you can trust. Uh, hydrology study is something I've been wanting to have so that we can protect our hillside and our neighbors, prevent erosion and flooding. Um, the budget, we can have more inclusion with you with that. So co public correspondence was, was disappeared in 2010. I lobbied to get it back. So I've been working to include you for certain principles all this time. You can trust me. I keep my promises. I make a commitment and I stick to it. Thank you. Thank you. Craig Cameron. <clears throat> Hello, I'm Craig Cameron. Ladies and gentlemen, many silly things are said in election campaigns. In this campaign, some will tell you the existing council is dysfunctional, that we can't work together effectively, and that we let staff control us. I would normally shrug off such rhetoric, but people are entitled to their own opinions after all, but they aren't entitled to their own facts. I want to state for the record at the outset these talking points are pure, unadulterated garbage. I would not be doing this work if we weren't getting things done, and while I certainly have many faults, just ask my wife, the notion that I'm submissive is not one of my faults. The notion that I let staff control me for seven years is laughable and offensive. I'm going to offer you some facts. Over the past term, Council has completed an OCP, an Economic Development Plan, an Arts Plan, and other plans. We have plans. Over the past term, we've introduced more alternative housing than has been approved for decades in West Vancouver. And over the past term, again for the first time, we have put our uh, aging infrastructure in, uh, into a sustainable funding uh, situation. While there's no doubt that we still face some challenges, I'm encouraged by the groundwork we've laid I want to finish the good work we've started. Thank you. Thank you. David Jones. Is it work? Hello, I'm David Jones. Uh, I'm a lifelong resident of West Vancouver, and I am also a small business owner in Ambleside. So I uh, have a lot of understanding about uh, what people might be thinking tonight. Um, as part of the Ambleside Dunderay BIA and the West Vancouver Chamber, and kind of the shoulder for most of my neighbours in Ambleside, uh, I'm very aware of the challenges that West Vancouver businesses have been facing. But the, the biggest disconnect I hope to, to fix, if elected, is the fact that the residents and the businesses are technically two different groups, but they both depend on each other. And so if decisions are made that impact the business community, it, it's kind of a disconnect that it actually it affects the residents who count on those businesses. So I hope to bring a bit of clarity, uh, like John Clark did back in his time, about showing West Vancouver that we um, actually are all to try and depend on each other. Thank you very much. Thank you. <clears throat> Gabriel Lauren. Good evening. It's kind of nice to be on the other side of the, well, actually, no, it's not really nice. I like, much prefer Ken's position. I'm Gabrielle Lauren. I'm the past president of the Chamber of Commerce. I was a board member for 14 years and then spent four of those as the Chamber President. I'm running for West Vancouver Council because I think West Vancouver needs to be more vibrant, livable, and affordable. There are a number of issues affecting businesses which are a priority to myself. As a chartered professional accountant and semi-retired business owner, I find that we have to do some things to help our businesses progress. We have problems with staffing. We have problems with parking. We have problems with affordable rents in the new developments. And we have a problem with transit to get our staff back and forth to our businesses. I'm hoping that you'll elect me part of your council for West Vancouver so I can help make a difference for West Vancouver. Thank you. Thank you. 
Heather Mercy. Hello, I'm Heather Mersey, and uh, I've been in the community for 35 years. I'm running for council because I'm very concerned about the next four years. I think we face a critical time going forward. We have just finished the OCP process, and we're going into stage two, which is the local area plans. Two of these affect our business areas, Ambleside and Horseshoe Bay. As we go forward, we need to make decisions that enhance our businesses and at the same time offer housing diversity to our residents. I look forward to bringing my community experience, which has been extensive. I've been active for approximately 20 years in different positions, uh, director, chair, and president of a number of community organizations. Most recently, I was on the district-appointed Community Engagement Committee. That committee looked at public engagement processes as well as appointing members to working group. With all this experience, I feel I could offer a good voice on council for you. On October 20th, I would ask to think, you to think of Heather Mersey for your council. Thank you. Jim Finkbeiner. Hello, I'm Jim Finkbeiner. Um, I've uh, had 40 years experience in the business community. I'm a chartered accountant by training. I worked for a very large internationally based industrial company and in, we had to live with very fierce competition and so we had to make tough decisions all the time. In West Vancouver, you've got three, maybe four distinct business areas, and a lot of those businesses are struggling for one reason or another. Some of it involves trying to get enough employees, or traffic, traffic congestion, cost of rent, whatever. The one interesting thing about it is, by bylaw, West Vancouver doesn't have an industrial base. That bylaw goes back, I think, to 1925. So the business community is absolutely linked to the residents, as David was pointing out. So you want a vibrant, bi vibrant business community because they're serving you, the residents. I think council and the municipality has got to show some leadership to try to solve some of the problems faced by that business committee. Thank you. Thank you. Kate Manville. Dr. Haycock, my fellow candidates, Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Kate Manvell, and I am a 29-year resident here in West Vancouver. I'm running as a candidate for West Van Council because I am concerned that we need to have better financial discipline in regard to our, mutual sp our municipal spending, as well, better use of our land. According to a recent Fraser Institute study, West Vancouver is the highest spender of all the Metro Vancouver municipalities. 83 to 85% of our annual budget is spent on staff wages with a population of approximately 42,000 residents. This is an extremely important municipal election, as we all know. Please ensure you have a full understanding of what each candidate's intentions are if elected, as well as considering their qualifications to represent you. If I'm fortunate to be elected, I will work hard for you. Thanks for coming out tonight. Marcus Wong. My name is Marcus Huang. I was born in Vancouver and raised in West Vancouver. Most recently, I sat on the West Vancouver Police Board for six years, where I chaired the Finance and the Governance Committee. In the past, I've worked for the Canadian Olympic Committee, a major utility company, as well as the Canadian Embassy in Washington, D.C. Today, I'm the CEO of an athletic wear company, as well as a provincially appointed tribunal adjudicator. I also sit on the boards of the North Shore Multicultural Society and the West Vancouver Track and Field Club. In West Vancouver, we are missing an entire generation. We have limited housing options. And on top of that, we are spending over 1.5 times more per capita in tax dollars than the regional average. And our businesses are suffering for it. No employees, nobody can access our town centers, and it's getting worse. I'm running because I believe that West Vancouver can do better. In fact, we deserve better. So with your support, we will do better. Thank you, Nora Gambioli. Is that working? All right, I gotta click it. Good, I'm gonna sit down because that blue light's not very flattering for me, I think. So, my name is Nora Gambioli. I have some experience in this job because I've been one of your counselors for seven years now. 
My commitment is evident. I was born and raised here. My family has lived here for almost 100 years, and I have served this community as a volunteer for more than 30 years. As we've heard, we have some challenges in West Vancouver, but the really good news for you and us is that those challenges are dealt with in our new official community plan. This document is our 25-year plan for the future of West Vancouver. It's progressive and it's thoughtful and it's going to bring us into the 21st century. It deals with housing and the environment and it is also integrated with our brand new economic development plan, with our <laughs> arts and culture strategy, and with our new North Shore transportation plan. So the new council and mayor have a lot to implement, but the fact is that Thank we are you. organized and on the right Thank track. You. Peter Lambert. Uh, thank you. Uh, good evening, everyone. My name is Peter Lambert. I'm the newest addition to West Van Council, elected in 2016 on my neighborhood's first platform. As an architect and urban planner, I'm invested in making my community the best it can be. And for my neighborhood, Ambleside, that means finishing the official community plan to include a new local area plan for Ambleside in 2019. And I'm excited by what I see happening. At the All Candidates meeting two weeks ago, there was a consensus on respecting the existing scale and seaside village character of Ambleside. Connections to our waterfront park, a refurbished ferry building, and Silk Purse also received strong community support. There's the new B-Line Rapid Bus Transit service that should pay big dividends in terms of accessibility and easing our parking problem. And there's strong commercial interest in infill retail and even a small hotel to diversify the Ambleside experience. An attractive, healthy, and sustainable Ambleside village is within our grasp, and I would welcome working with the Business Thanks, Improvement Peter. Association. Thank you. Sharon Thompson. Thank you for coming out tonight. My name is Sharon Thompson. This is an important election to make sure we elect the right government. I have a perspective and approach that would add value to council. The big issues facing West Vancouver are regional and require provincial and federal support. The perspective I have comes from my work with the province in the riding of West Vancouver Sea to Sky. I run central communications and community outreach through our office in Horseshoe Bay. Many of you have called on me there. We work with six Marin Council in our riding and I can clearly see all that a municipality can do to command the support of senior government. You need a local government that understands how to leverage these relationships and how to advocate effectively for funding and in negotiations. I'm a team player, I work well with others, and I bring people together and would welcome a seat on West Vancouver Council. Thank you. And to great applause from the audience for the opening statements. <laughs> Thank you. First question, what do you feel are the two most important elements of the economic development plan? Carol Ann Reynolds. The of the economic development plan, you mean West Vancouver's, the, the one that Steve Mikitich did? Okay, well, I, I really like his work, and I know one of the things that he is trying to emphasize is make this a tourist attraction, too. I know that you have, your businesses have problems getting staff because they're not living here, so there is a, a word about affordable housing, and we know parking, we're going to address that, and leases are expensive, so we have to address that, too. But. Uh, Mainly, I think I've heard the complaint is parking. So if we can handle that, we can start on the rest of them. Thank you. Gabriel Lorne. Thank you. So one of the problems with the economic, or one of the results from the economic development plan talks about partnerships. They talk about bringing in some of the business communities like the West Vancouver Chamber of Commerce and having them with the Ambleside Dundrave um, uh, Business Improvement Association do some partnerships to help facilitate the economic development plan. 
Partnerships are a very important part of being able to help businesses accomplish more than they can on their own. It's the same that it works with teamwork and hopefully with some of the collaboration that will be happening, we can get things done. Again, what do you feel are the two most important elements of the Economic Development Plan? Kate Manville. Here's one coming. This is a collaborative group. Oh, here. darn. Um, yes, parking, I know, as a small business owner, for me, parking is just uh, becoming a really big problem, as is the traffic congestion as well, with getting my clients uh, to me during daytime hours. Thank you. How would you describe your current relationship with the local business community in West Vancouver? Craig Cameron. Could we just assess how many working microphones we have and where they are? This one, this one. We have three. Is this working? So oh, it's working now. So they're all working now. Okay, thanks. Craig? I would, I, I would say the, the one word that describes my relationship with local business community is supportive. Um, I really want to do uh, what they uh, tell me uh, they need uh, in West Vancouver. So what does that mean? I think uh, for Ambleside, it's going to mean uh, redevelopment. We have a lot of uh, tired old buildings, and uh, the Ambleside revitalization strategy talks about the need uh, to assemble, uh, to bring more people to live in the area, and also uh, to assemble properties to allow for anchor tenants. The other issue that I hear from the local business community is parking. Uh, that's why I oppose any removal of parking on Argyle until we've, uh, we've found uh, parking elsewhere, and I would uh, pursue any other parking strategies that are feasible, including apartment buildings, a dedicated parking structure, um, and, and uh, any other ride-sharing or, or alternatives. So the, the word I would use is supportive. Thank you. Again, describing your... Two, your uh, I'm sorry, Bill? Soferbitch? Thank you, uh, uh, Chairman. Um, it stated that if we do not advance uh, some land use planning, uh, that in fact uh, we will find that uh, there will be uh, just local area people shopping and, and small number of visitors. But in the land use planning, I, I have a very uncomfortable feeling with that. I am supportive of development along the corridor. But uh, until we do the local area planning, I, I'm quite uh, cautious in uh, what we're going to end up with. So I, I'm, I'm in the middle of something uh, that <clears throat> will require a lot of input from all of you, and certainly from the council of the day, um, to see, in fact, how we can develop the business strip. How high will it go? What is the diversification <coughs> to residential in the area? These are all important issues that have to be dealt with in the next four years. Um, thank you. I'd just like to um, indicate the role of the, the cards, and um, I perhaps wasn't very clear at the beginning, but I'm going to take the cards after the three candidates have answered the question, uh, and then if anyone wishes to speak to that question, uh, they can use the card. If they choose not to speak to that question, I reserve the right to conclude. So, how would you describe your current relationship with the local business community, Heather Mercy? I would, I would recommend that we leave the mics on, set them on the table, and person closest pass it to the person who's been asked the question. Hello? Okay. I guess I'm on. Um, my relationship with the uh, Ambleside Business Association, I think you're talking about the businesses in the, in the uh, village. I have a good understanding of, what the, of the issues they face. They're facing issues of staffing, parking, and leases. And what we need to do is, I know we're talking about redevelopment, which could answer some of the uh, need for parking spaces, but we have a lot of cultural activities at place take place here that bring hundreds of people into our community and we need to get those people 
from Harmony Arts, Canada Day, Community Day, up into the businesses to help them. Thank you. And how would you describe your current relationship with the local business community in West Vancouver? Marcus Wong. Thank you for that question. As a business owner, I certainly understand the challenges that businesses face in West Vancouver. The lack of employees, the lack of accessibility, lack of being able to park your cars when you get to that place that you want to go to. I think all of these things need to be improved so that we have a thriving community in all of our town centers. Imagine if you could go down to Ambleside Village and have all the greatest restaurants, greatest establishments, greatest stores that highlighted the best of West Vancouver. That's something we could be so incredibly proud of. Maybe even a small boutique hotel on the waterfront there. Just something that just, think of Hermosa Beach in California. Those wonderful places you can walk along on the sunset, bring your friends, your partners, your families. I think that's what we need to aim for. Thank you. Thank you. If elected, would you be in favor of attracting more businesses, services, shops and cafe restaurants to our local areas? If yes, how would you do this? Bill Sopravich? Well, aside from the economic development plan and the strategy by the BIA, and incidentally, uh, just to give a thumbs up on both, the chamber is uh, setting up a new board under uh, Mark, and, uh, and uh, they're going to come with some great things in the future. And the BIA has been moving along uh, uh, quite efficiently, and, but they come to a stall because there is no plan, there is no vision. There's no plan for the vision. The economic plan that we have says we want to improve uh, vibrancy within the business community to create more for employees, to even more tax dollars, uh, things of that nature. My thoughts are that we have to start somewhere. And in the next four years, and hopefully in this next year in 2019, uh, that we're going to have some action on uh, the delivery of the BIA and the economic plan. It's simple, small steps forward. And I don't, get, I don't like to get into too many details because I keep an open mind of what's going on. Thank you. I'm done. I, uh, I wouldn't, I'm not going to kid you, I think um, it would be very, it's going to be very difficult to attract business into West Vancouver. Um, you've got creative destruction going on at every level in the business community worldwide. And the problems facing West Vancouver, we're going to have to encourage businesses to come in here and probably support them in some fashion or other. I think, realistically, you've got to focus on the, on the um, serving the local community. We don't have an industrial base. We never will have an industrial base. So it's going to be a service type of occupations. But the problem we have there is finding the employees to work in those businesses. So somehow we have to find solutions. Either you subsidize it, or you're going to have to create the economics that will attract that business in. Thank you. Thank you. Nora Gambioli. Thank you. Uh, well, I have to disagree with Bill a little bit on this, and that is that, uh, as I said before, we have a new economic development plan, and in that plan, it talks about three main uh, elements, which are a visitor strategy, which talks about providing visitor accommodation, B&Bs, and possibly using heritage properties as, uh, as B&B locations. It talks about strengthening the five commercial uh, centers, and most importantly, in my opinion, it talks about emerging opportunities, including creating local jobs in the technology, the film, the green industry, healthcare, tourism, and those related sectors. This economic development plan is the plan, and it's full of great ideas. We just have to implement it as soon as we possibly can. Thank you. I have two people who want to add to that. David Jones first. Um, 
I'd just like to point out to the council, there are staff who make sure that the microphones are working all the time in case you're concerned about this. All right, thank you guys. Thank you, thank you very much. <laughs> they were all on when you received them. For the love of God. There we go. There we are. Um, to, to attract new businesses and then the customers and the employees to, to West Vancouver, it, 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 there's a three prong challenge. One is the inventory for lease right now is very old and not suitable for people that are willing to invest millions of dollars into new business. Most of the stock in Ambleside has a 30-day demolition clause, which means if you lease the space, uh, your business could be closed within 30 days if the building were to sell. The other problem is the real estate in Ambleside especially is all very small parcels. And those parcels need to be combined into a larger parcel to be attractive for someone to develop. And I believe there's some movement in this area, but not fast enough. Um, the last question, uh, or the last part of that is our staff. Our staff are moving farther and farther and farther away, and the biggest challenge to most of the businesses, other than parking, which I know that one, is finding people to work in West Vancouver. Thank you. Thank you. Gabriel Lauren. In order to attract business to anywhere in West Vancouver, we have to make coming to West Vancouver easy. We just had a tenant improvement uh, done in our office and it took 10 weeks to get the building permit. To me, that is unacceptable for a small business owner. We need to have affordable housing for our staff, which means we need diversified housing. We need to allow for secondary suites. We need to allow for duplexes and triplexes. So I think when you're looking at bringing economic development to West Vancouver, you have to be open for business. Thank you. Regarding housing development, West Vancouver, do you feel that there is too little, too much, or just the right amount, and why? Sharon Thompson? My understanding is that they want to increase units by about 5,000 over the next 25 years. That makes sense to me. Um, there's a couple new propositions that can fill that nicely. The development called Cypress Village, would hap which happens above the highway. Um, that in itself would host anywhere from 2,000 to 4,000 units and create a density above the highway and take the pressure off of all the density along the main corridor. However, um, I don't think you're going to get a, a business vibrancy without creating light density or more density along the corridor. Thank you. Andy Krosick? Housing mix is one of the crying, crying needs in West Vancouver and crying need for businesses. Um, we do have a plan. Some people have referred to it already, the official community plan that has been passed. That is the good news. We have a way forward. What I would like to see and I would call for is immediately to fast track any coach house, any secondary suite um, development that is uh, being asked for in order to ensure that those homeowners who already have a way of trying to increase our housing stock can do so as quickly as possible within the current bylaws. At the same time, I think we need to get going on a uh, housing mix strategy. The local area plans have been referenced and I am very supportive of those with the, with the idea that by the end of the uh, local area plans we will have figured out how the targets which the OCP right now has can be met in the next 20 years. We need to attract a greater diversity of people. Thank you. Peter Lambert. This one works? Okay. Well, on the issue of too little, too much, or just right, the, the answer is it depends. I mean, we have targets in the official community plan, and what we need to do is test those targets through the local area planning process. A thousand units in Appleside at one level seems okay, but what we have to do is test out that mix of units, location of units through the local area planning process. Same applies to Horseshoe Bay and a little less so to Cypress, which is a greenfield site. But most of our community, as you all know, is mature and fully developed. 
So it's much more sensitive to development than, um, uh, than suburban areas, and we have to respect that. Thank you. David Jones? Gabriel, would you pass the uh, mic to David? Yes, well, I was just having the mic passed to him. Sorry, this I'll is the, the, the development question. question. Like. Regarding housing development in West Mr. Vancouver. Were you repeating uh, the question uh, for this, him? It, yeah. it would, yep. Uh, as far as the, uh, the business uh, districts are concerned, uh, there is not being enough development. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, that without leasable space, we're not going to attract more people to move their businesses to West Vancouver. Um, and again, a lot of the stuff is so old and dilapidated and won't be around very long, um, it will probably fall over soon, uh, that we, we need to look at building more uh, retail space to attract more people to be here. So I say we need to build more and we don't have enough. Thank you. Thank you. Using a card, Marcus Wong. Yes, I'm using a card. So I grew up in West Vancouver. I graduated in 1999 from Sentinel and I'm virtually the last one left of my graduating class in West Vancouver. Everybody has moved away because they don't want to live here, nor can they find the type of housing that they need. Young people today, and I see a few in the crowd here, when they're graduating from university, they want to find something affordable, probably a condo, maybe a townhouse. And then on the other end of the spectrum, older folks who are retiring want to downsize and also want to move into similar types of housing. My parents are a great example. $3 million house. It doesn't make sense for them to sell a $3 million house for a $3 million condo. In West Vancouver, we need to start building the types of housing that will attract the types of people we want, but also allow the people in West Vancouver to stay in West Vancouver. Otherwise, we're going to be continuing to hollow out, the businesses will continue to suffer, and we'll be in this never-ending cycle. Thank you. <laughs> you seeing a card, Craig Cameron? Yeah, I think... <clears throat> Hello? I think in, answer, in answering the question, it's not whether there's too much, too little, the right, the right amount, it's the wrong type of development. We have a great deal of residential development going on in the district in, in the form of four or five, six thousand square foot houses and luxury condos. Ultimately, this is giving us more of what we've got and not what we need. What we need, and following along with Marcus is saying, is we need the type of development that's meeting a crying community need and that fits into the neighborhood. So what is that? That is laneway houses, that is duplexes, that is triplexes. And developers will build what they can build to make money. What we need to do as a district is incentivize the type of development we want to see. So that may mean separately titling, titling your coach house. That may mean giving some bonus density for coach houses. That may mean the district rezoning areas for purpose-built rental uh, and requiring developers to do that. So it's not about to, whether we have an arbitrary amount of development, it's about the type of development that we're encouraging. Whose hand is that? Nora? Nora Thank you. Yeah. So I just want to clarify the numbers because I think I heard 5,000 over here and I just want to be clear. The plan, the official community plan says 300 units, give or take, over the next 25 years would be coach houses in single family neighborhoods. 300, give or take, uh, about 50 units would be duplexes, triplexes and townhouses in the areas closer to town centers, and it says a total of about 1,900, give or take a couple hundred, in Ambleside, the uh, Taylorway Corridor, and Horseshoe Bay over a period of 25 years. And that does not include, so that total number is 2,600, that does not include the Cypress Village, which is still quite a long way off. But those are the numbers that we all supported in the official community plan in June. Thank you. Another card from Caroline Reynolds. Thank you. What can you? Is this? Um, the way we've just started the neighborhood character working group, which is excellent. I wish you would all get 
involved. One of my mottos is diversity by design. I don't want something to be all over the whole community. I don't want your neighborhood to be invaded by this, that, or the other. We can choose our neighborhood and we can have all different types of neighborhood, single family, those with laneways, cottages, coach houses, uh, condos, and all this, but they should be specifically zoned that you can move into the area that you want to be in and you like, it's park-like or it's condo-like, whatever it is you want, but you live in that zone and nobody interrupts, invades, or changes it. Then you can be comfortable. You've chosen the sort of neighborhood you want to live in and you know that that you can keep. Thank you. Card with Bill Soprovich, your second card. And that's it for me? That's it. <laughs> Believe it. Well, a little too much or too less. I think the big thing, uh, I, I agree with the fact that we need some alternate housing, but let me tell you, there is going to be a local area planning. And, and before we start doing that, we, you ever give a thought as to the size of the properties all the way along in Elmside or Horseshoe Bay or Caulfield, whether in fact they have enough room to go underground with parking? Is there a master parking plan that's been set up? Not yet. So this vision that the BIA is looking at, it, it's all good. They're doing some marketing and uh, they're on buses now to attract people and that they're gonna move forward in a, in a good way. We hope the chamber will go ahead and add to that. But I'm not quite ready to uh, wholesale out this community in relationship to uh, density all over the place. I'm gonna hold and watch what happens when you folks speak out and then I'm gonna in take all that information, talk to my colleagues and then see where we are. And then I'll make a decision. Thank you. I now have a question for the incumbents on council. Um, of what accomplishment from the past term are you most proud? And what is your singular regret from the past term? We'll start with Peter Lambert. Oh, that's great. Is this, is this work? Yeah, OK. I feel like starting with that Frank Sinatra song about regrets, I have a few. but. Um, Actually, I as I long don't, as you only take a minute, you can sing all your life. Yeah, well, <laughs> you you, you, really, you really don't want to hear me hear me sing. Um, I actually don't have um, uh, any regrets, and and I should say too, I I have the benefit or the disadvantage, whichever way you look at it, of having only been on council for half the term. Um, but I guess the accomplishment that I'm most proud of, and I won't take sole credit for this. But uh, when I arrived on council, or shortly thereafter, there was uh, a, a lot more uh, community engagement uh, taking place. And uh, that may have been a result of the by-election, but it's uh, something that I advocated for and continue to push for. And uh, one more thing, I'm very proud that we're getting the Neighborhood Character Working Group uh, going again. And um, yeah, I think I'll leave it at that. Thank you. Nora Gambioli? Well, it's hard to narrow it down to one, but you can probably guess that I, I feel that our biggest accomplishment in this past term is the official community plan. It is a combination of hundreds of meetings with the community, thousands and thousands of um, inputs from uh, the community, and uh, all seven of us on council supported that official community plan. So that is a legacy that will be going on for 25 years. So I really am happy and excited about that. And uh, if I have one regret, I would say that it's the, um, the meeting two and a half years ago where we tried to decrease the density uh, single family homes um, to deal with the monster home issue and we were not able to do that because the entire council chamber was full of builders and real estate agents and developers who essentially shouted us down and intimidated enough people on council that that didn't pass. Thank you. Bill Soprovich? Again, um, what accomplishment from the past term are you most proud of, and what is your singular regret from the past term? Well, uh, going back 22 years, I've, I've worked uh, diligently on your behalf. Uh, there's no question that I went out to uh, over thousands of uh, sites, and now I've counted uh, 
pretty much to two, three thousand. Uh, helping people is something that was a service that I felt as well as giving policy uh, during the time uh, on council. I have no regrets. I've worked very, very hard uh, with colleagues that have the incumbents. And uh, well, I could say I worked my buns off, and you could see I've already any left. <laughs> there is so much work to do. If I took any one of you and sat you down in City Hall, I could fill you with eight hours of reading and necessary documents. I was on an environmental review about wood fiber and the change to LNG gas. I was one of the only councillors on that committee. When it was done, they sent the review, environmental review to the office for me to peruse. Each copy was almost uh, six inches thick, and there were six of them. Thank you. That's the type of reading we had to do. Thank you, Mr. Thank Chairman, you. for letting me know. Craig Cameron. Well, I'm, I'm proud of the fact that I chaired the Community Engagement Committee from when it was uh, uh, reformed uh, for several years and we improved our engagement practices. And I'm also proud that we've approved the first significant rental housing, hundreds of units of de de dedicated rental housing, the first such in the last 40 years. Um, but the biggest, uh, I think, accomplishment we've done is the OCP, which strikes a balance of allowing the community to grow, uh, but not uh, growing it out of control. And we have a very modest but significant uh, growth rate that I think will serve the community well. Uh, my single regret is probably with the Sewell's development. I really wanted to see rental housing in that development. It's a significant development, and it should have been there. And uh, I was somewhat of the lone voice on that. And at the end of the day, I, I, um, I was convinced by staff that we should accept $4 million in lieu. Uh, having done it, uh, you know, having time to reflect, I, I think we should have had a portion of that development and any significant development be purpose-built rental. Thank you. Thank you. I didn't miss an incumbent, did I? No. no. Okay. Our business members continue to struggle to attract and retain employees. Some of this is due to transit issues and housing prices. What do you see as possible solutions to this problem? Caroline Reynolds. Well, that, that's a very difficult one. Depends on what you're going to pay your, uh, what you're going to pay your staff. Um, obviously, to work in West Van, it would have to be quite a bit, of, uh, quite a high pay in order to live there. Um, we had a computer consulting firm, and uh, you could work at home. One of the things that's good that's happening in West Van is people having home-based businesses. They, they are at home, they work at home, they don't have to travel, and uh, that's working very well. Um, I don't think we should, I think we should have affordable housing for our emergency staff, but uh, how we could get it for uh, people who have to live in Burnaby, or who delightfully live in Burnaby, um, I, you know, we're going to have to think about what what we pay for what. And that might mean that we're going to have different sorts of businesses here. Thank you. David Jones, our business members continue to struggle to attract and retain employees. Some of this is due to transit issues and housing prices. What do you see as possible solutions to this problem? Oh, oh, yeah, we are on. Okay, sir. <laughs> um, uh, the issue of um, uh, attracting and retaining employees in West Vancouver, both for the, the district and for the private businesses and services, uh, I think the time has come to seriously consider uh, workforce housing in West Vancouver, where we would build uh, off-market uh, strata units and off-market rentals on property that we own so we can staff our people close to home. Uh, and this is, this, is, this is everybody from uh, firefighters, police officers, people that work for the district to restaurant staff, and you're not banging the gavel, that's good. And um, this could be done, and the rental units could actually be a revenue positive part for West Vancouver if we actually retain ownership of the buildings and the land. It would also take thousands of cars off the road with over 5,000 people coming to West Vancouver to work every day and then leaving. And everyone wants to see less traffic. Thank you. Thank you. Heather Mercy. This, 
is on. Um, in terms of attracting staff, I think we should look uh, locally. We should work with high schools to try and entice some of the students to work within the many little businesses in Ampleside. I think for people coming from outside of Ampleside, we need to have good transit. I, I, I don't think there's any illusion that people don't come from North Vancouver to work in West Vancouver. In terms of housing options, I, I'm very happy to say that in the neighborhood where I live, which is in Ambleside, almost every house around me has secondary suites. I think that's a good option. Also, coach houses. And then the other one, uh, rental housing, we need to try to address that. The district does have lands, and there's some uh, opportunities coming forward, so we could look into that. Thank you. Thank you. And Kate Manville? I don't want to discount this because I know it is a problem, but I also believe it's a problem everywhere, not just in West Vancouver. I know our downtown notary office, we have challenges with, with staff. So I think it's a staffing thing, a, a, a availability as much as it is um, West Vancouver. So that's all I have to say about that. Thank you. And using a card, Andy Crossick? I think it, part of the answer is in integrating business into the daily life of West Vancouver. It, uh, too many times, and I go back 50, 55 years, when Stan's Grossateria was at 13th and Marine. And it was part of the community, and many of us, I in fact knew the son of Stan. Today, we've sort of handled business as if it's the appendage to West Vancouver, not an integral part. In the economic development plan, it talks about a resilient community. A resilient community is a community which is vibrant, where business plays a role not, as, not on the side, but as directly involved. And that's where the housing is part of business, business is part of housing, and we all intermix. That, I think, will help in ensuring that the, the students, as they consider the world of business, understand that they are going to be as much a part of the community as anyone else. I think that would help attract younger people into business and for them to stay. Housing obviously would have to be found in order to make sure that they will, in fact, stay. Thank you. Jim Finkbeiner using a card. I think uh, we're at a crisis. One report I just recently read, there's only one city, according to this report, whose affordability index is worse than I'm going to say Vancouver, but it's really Metro Vancouver, and that's Hong Kong. Right now, there's 385,000 job openings in Canada, and there's 10 times that in the U.S. If you want a job, you can have it. So the merchants on the North Shore, not just West Vancouver, but Greater Vancouver, really, they have to compete for employees, and the employees are not likely to be traveling 10, 15, 20 miles in two hours to come over to West Vancouver. So I think it is a crisis. I absolutely agree with David Jones that we can't solve it, but we can help with some, call it subsidized rental accommodation. And what I would do is you'd have a means test periodically to, if you got, your income's got to be below a certain level, and you've also got to demonstrate that you say work on the North Shore. I think all the municipalities on the North Shore got to collaborate on this. I think it's a crisis. Thank you. And using a card, Sharon Thompson? The issues surrounding uh, retaining employees are, are big, but there's a lot of small things we can do um, to alleviate some of it, and we need to get proactive as business owners, whether it's providing carpooling opportunities, ride sharing, staggering hours so people aren't uh, commuting over peak periods. But further to that, you know, housing is really a, um, an issue, and with that, we really need to look at our partnerships. Uh, BC Ferries, who's looking at uh, redoing their terminal is actually considering putting some workforce housing within the terminal. The schools, the private schools, are having trouble attracting and retaining teachers, as are public schools too, but private schools might have the opportunity to create this sort of housing around their, their uh, facilities as well. The other thing is the employment health tax has, has hit our small businesses, making it even more challenging to be sustainable. It somehow um, implies that if you have a high payroll, you actually have a high uh, revenue. We need to fight back on this, and it is going to be reviewed in the province this year. Thank you. 
traffic and now a lack of parking also continue to be problems for local business owners. What solutions do you have to address these issues? Marcus Wong? Thank you. Well, certainly I think we need to be a bit more innovative when it comes to parking. In West Vancouver, we are limited by our geography, yet a lot of our parking is surface parking. A great thing that's been done right now is under the Grovner building. At the Earls, they have underground parking, the secret 50 spots there. I guess I'm just sharing my secret with you now, and you're all going to park there afterwards. But we need more parking like that, places where we can tuck away cars and also let people get to where they need to go. We also need to have other alternative modes of transportation, car share, Evo, things like that, improve ways of getting around, bicycles, walking. I'm a big believer in 20-minute neighborhoods, making sure that amenities are within a 20-minute walk or 20-minute bike from your home. So we certainly need to improve on that front. With respect to traffic, it's a big problem. It's gonna take a multi-pronged approach, working with our neighbors in North Vancouver, Squamish Nation, as well as the District of Squamish, to work on all of the different components, infrastructure improvements, uh, looking at traffic flow, demand management, but also planning for the infrastructure of tomorrow. Our current transportation plan is about reactive, so we need to be proactive. Thank you. Gabriel Lauren. If you've ever been down at Taylor Way and Marine Drive at Christmas time, sometimes you see a police officer in the middle of the road. And how many times have you found that you're actually moving? Thank you to Park Royal. They actually pay for that police officer. And until we get our traffic <laughs> under control, one of the things I'd love to see is a permanent person there about 4 o'clock in the afternoon, and every afternoon, so we get that traffic going. <laughs> On top of that, we've got the BC Ferries dump at 5 p.m. with 500 cars. At a recent meeting with BC Ferries, we were able to talk to the owner, or the president, and suggested that he maybe stagger the amount of cars that come off at key peak traffic times. Those kind of collaborative solutions is what will make us finally move. Thank you. Andy Crossett. I would first of all agree that collaborative solutions are what we need to do and, and there are some collaborative solutions out there but I want to go specifically to the issue of parking and I want to suggest a proposal or bring back a proposal that was suggested some years ago. There are any number of stratas which at present if you look in the, uh, in the basement or on the first floor have parking slots that are not used and I understand that quite a great deal of discussion has occurred over the years to try to do that. What I'm going to suggest when I get to Council is that we try a pilot project. In the first year, find five strata owners that will put up their hands, for strata building owners um, that will put up their hands, and see if we can put employees from various businesses into those spots, which then free up parking spots on the street for those customers that all of those businesses want. You start small, you start with that idea, and who knows how many parking spots at the end of the day we will liberate. Thank you. It's only one idea. Thank you. Do you do mulligans? <laughs> <laughs> That's the old fundraiser croquet, I think. Um, final question, so no more cards. A lot of businesses, business properties are owned by absentee landlords and have not been well maintained or brought up to code. What is your approach for dealing with this situation, Sharon Thompson? That is a problem. Um, you know, I've heard uh, some candidates talk about knocking on the doors of those owners and just saying, let us open up this space for public space, for art or, or some sort of uh, showcase building. I, um, I'm not quite sure about the viability of that. I guess to start with we really need to understand what that stock is and uh, really create a plan under um, utilizing our space. Thank you. Jim Finkbeiner? I'm not sure there's a silver bullet um, or a magic solution. Um, you could you could take the draconian step of expropriating, which I don't think 
Uh, we like that approach here in Canada. Fundamentally, you have to develop some economics that, that would encourage the owner, the landowner, to rebuild and also allow whoever's going to occupy that property to, to have a viable business and pay the increased rent. Now, that probably means more space to rent. I mean, that's the economics of it. Short of that, there's no, ma I don't think there's a, a magic bullet, silver lining or anything like that. Thank you. And thank you to the candidates for their responses to the questions. Uh, we'll now move to closing statements. Um, each candidate has answered two questions. And in order to facilitate the microphone, microphones a little more easily, we'll start at the far end with Sharon Thompson. And move this way. One minute. We are all acutely aware of the pressures in West Vancouver and on the North Shore. And as you can see, all the candidates are passionate about their community and, and have a similar vision for where we need to go. You're going to have to figure out who to elect, what team you have confidence in to navigate these next four years. I believe we need to refresh our ideas and approach, and we need an injection of new energy and inspiration in our community. I'm excited about devoting the next four years to building a better community. Yours, mine, and ours. I'm Sharon Thompson. Thank you. Thank you. Peter Lambert. Well, I guess this is the time when I tell you why you should vote for me. Um, as I briefly mentioned in my opening remarks, I am an architect and a planner and bring this skill set to the council table. With more than 65% of council agenda items being development issues, it would make sense that at least one councillor have some background in this field. And as I have worked for both private and public sector interests, I understand their motivations and how, as a municipal councillor, to achieve the highest value and benefit for the community. And I'll leave you with one last observation. We have to get rid of this lingering notion that voters and elected representatives fall into either a pro or anti-development camp. There will always be tension when new projects are proposed anywhere, but I would like to think we've mostly gotten over that in West Van with the unanimous support for our new official community plan. The issue is good development versus bad development, and as an architect and planner, I can help Council make these distinctions. Thank you. Nora Gambioli. Well, thank you for coming tonight, everyone. And as you saw, I pointed out, we have finally completed these great plans. So let us start to create the community that we need and the community that we want. Please choose candidates on Saturday who you trust to courageously make the best decisions and not only the most popular decisions for our whole community and for the long-term future of our community. I am one of those candidates, and I'm going to just help you for a minute to remember my name by passing on a little ditty that my girlfriend made for me when I was 10 years old, and it goes like this. Salami, bologna, cheese and macaroni, spaghetti, ravioli, and Nora Gambioli. Thank you. We gotta have some fun, right? <clears throat> I'm sorry to put you up next, Marcus, but there you go. <laughs> Folks, we all know what is at stake. This community is not just your community. It's not just my community. It is our community. And so if we want West Vancouver to be the best that it can be, we must. In fact, we have a moral imperative to elect qualified individuals can make the tough decisions and who have a clear vision for what this community can, can become. We need better diversity of housing options. We need better transportation efficiency. We need better governance and tax dollar value. So I'm asking you to stand with me. I'm asking you to vote for me. And I'm asking you to stop settling for what we have to accept. With my record of getting things done as a community leader, as an impartial analytical decision maker and of commitment to West Vancouver, I resolve to you that I will get all of these things done and address them as soon as possible. Friends, we can do better. We must do better. And with your support, we will do better. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Kate Manville. I'm sorry, Kate Manville. 
Thank you, Dr. Haycock. If elected, my intentions to serve you on council include to maintain and preserve the ferry building, the silk purse, and the West Vancouver Sailing Club, and establishing another boat ramp. In regard to future development, let's lease and let's not sell our property. Support of uh, our municipal property. Support a value for audit regarding staff and wages. Work on traffic flows. Move forward cautiously but aggressively in regard to land use. Future developments need to comply with current zoning. Is this what the community wants? Is this what the community needs? Retain the view corridors in keeping with the nature of the neighborhood. Retain the current height restrictions as per zoning. Attract younger families with affordable housing, but not at the expense of our aging population. Listen to voters and residents and respect their views. My name is Kate Manvell. I'd like you to vote for me on Saturday. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Jim Finkbeiner. I'm going to stick to the business side since this is sponsored by the business community. In the, in the business world, you've got to go into businesses here in West Vancouver where you have an absolute competitive advantage. And there actually are some businesses that actually arise out of the, some of the issues we have that would give businesses in West Van a competitive advantage. Because you've got to combine that competitive advantage together with a very rare commodity, which are entrepreneurs. Okay? Those two things are the things that create economic wealth. I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but government generally does not create economic wealth. So what government's role here, and I mean the municipality, is to get those two parties together and revitalize the business community in West Vancouver because it is a very integral part of your community. Just think of Marine Drive, Dunder Ave or Dunder Ave, and uh, Horseshoe Bay and Caulfield business districts disappear. We'd have a real problem. We have to revitalize that area. Thank you. Thank you. Heather Mercy. Going forward, I'd like to uh, work with the, the documents we have in place. We have the local area plans coming up. We have an economic development strategy. And we have an Ambleside Town Center strategy. We have the framework to go forward. I'd like to be part of that. I've worked in the community for a long time. I'm involved with two businesses. I do understand the bottom line. I support all the, the work that we do to bring staff here, solve problem, prob, sorry, it's been a long day, solve uh, staffing issues and parking issues and also our leases. So I would like to bring my commitment to the community, my understanding and be part of the change as we go forward in the next four years. Thank you. Thank you. Gabriel Lauren. As a resident of West Vancouver for over 53 years and running my business for 30 of those years, I know what it takes to make payroll. I know what it's like to start a business from scratch and see it grow and thrive and eventually sell it. Without a community behind me, I could never have done that. So thank you for that. I would like to be part of the team that takes West Vancouver to the next level to the next generation so that my kids and hopefully their kids will have the same fun, expertise and area of growth that I was able to have as an entrepreneur in West Vancouver. Thank you. Thank you. David Jones. <clears throat> Sorry. I feel strongly that the new council needs to put forward a future vision of West Vancouver as a more resilient community. One where seniors can continue to live in the, as their housing needs change. One where we can attract and accommodate younger families and workers who will one day become seniors too. Together, we can work with the development community and build or rebuild the housing options we need. Together, we can locate our workforce close to home and cut down on transportation gridlock and staff shortages. Together, we can work with our neighboring municipalities towards solving our transportation issues. However, the most important piece of this equation is you, our residents. We need to hear your ideas, opinions, and concerns in order to make the future of West Vancouver work for all of us. I look forward to working for you. Have a nice evening and be sure to vote on Saturday. Thank you. Thank you. Greg Cameron. Hi. I'm going to tell you what you'll get from me if I'm re-elected. 
You'll get a counselor with years of experience who understands the community, what needs to get done, and how to get it done. You'll get a counselor who will treat you with respect, who will listen and always keep an open mind. You will get a counselor that is clear about where he stands and that will always be straight. You'll get a counselor that will work constructively, seek compromise, but also make hard choices where possible. You will get a counselor who can work constructively with neighboring municipalities, First Nations, regional officials, and MLAs, and also a counselor that will fight on your behalf at the region or provincial levels when necessary. The best predictor of past behavior is future behavior. My record over the past seven years speaks for itself. It's up for you to judge whether I have delivered. Serving this community for two terms has been an honor for me and I would be very pleased to go for a third term. Thank you. Thank you. Caroline Reynolds. Yes, it's up to you to if research each candidate and make sure that you agree with their principles and agree with their commitments and you know that they will do them. I will review a few of mine so that you know that you can count on Carol Ann. I started a newsletter in 1995 and I've been reporting on municipal affairs ever since. I want the hydrology study so that we can make sure our hillside is protected and not argue about what sort of tree. Uh, heritage, of course, as you know, I support, so of course I do not support council's decision to sell off part of Brissenden Park. I also ha would like to have a new award for housing and a new house every year, perhaps, that is a contribution to heritage. Heritage is what goes forward, not just what is back. I'll tell you one little event when I was on council and I was asked about having a residential at the corner of, I think, 22nd or something, and Marine Drive, and the architect said to me, yes, we need residential, we need residential. Thank you, anyway, I said, we need business, we don't have many business zones. Thank you. Bill Sofrovich? Well, good evening, uh, ladies and gentlemen, again, uh, it's been a great night. Uh, you know, after 22 years, you know, somebody said to me that I was an invasive species. Um, <laughs> Don't give me opening uh, like Dr. That. Haycock, I had to throw a little humor in. Um, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, I take uh, very seriously uh, the uh, work that we do on policy inside. I've been uh, uh, chairman of the Finance Committee, chairman of Emergency, um, emergency Services. I've been on every committee there ever was. I've been on 15 or 20 working groups. I'm a workhorse. Uh, I don't mind it. I'm retired. Um, I'm still able. And uh, I get very serious when it comes to decision making. I always sit back and wait till I hear uh, the final analysis from you and from our good colleagues on council. And I had the opportunity to say to Mayor Smith uh, and congratulate him for the seven years previous uh, of the council work that we did. And he, in fact, accepted that. And, uh, and I want to assure you, we did an awful lot of work. And uh, I look you. for your vote on Saturday. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Dr. Haycock, for all your good work. Thank you, Andy Crossing. Going last, uh, I, I get to kind of think some of the best of, of what has been said. So I'm not gonna rhyme because Krausick, the, the rhyme just doesn't work. <laughs> but I am gonna use something that was said by several in terms of the skill set. I would suggest to you that I will bring to, to this work the skill set which is of facilitating, of collaborating, one which I've demonstrated through a variety of ways in terms of the working groups that I've chaired here in West Vancouver, my principalship, the, my, um, my, sta my standing on a number of finance committees including of a large bureaucracy such as the Vancouver School Board and IB. So what I would bring to this work, what, why I'm asking for your vote, is to be able to use the skill set of collaboration to then get things done. My tagline is support action. I'm asking for you to support action by voting Andy Krasik on October 20th. Thank you very much. We are, we are going to take a 15 minute break. The candidates will be here uh, for you to ask your questions to them individually if you wish. We'll reconvene in 15 minutes for the mayoralty candidates uh, discussion. But I would ask you to join with me in respecting and honoring your neighbors who are putting their names forth to represent you on West Vancouver Council.